Fresh test to ask for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF, don't switch. Good times are coming on even deep diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch along. Still the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South, they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Yo, big up everyone, it's Rich here, Eagle Eye Football, and I've got something special for you. Now, James, um, you may know him as Mr. Mateta. He's obviously a Mateta fan, massive Mateta fan. And he's obviously contributed to, to the channel a lot through fan cams. He's on a few Eagle News for the channel. And he's always in the comments, always supporting. Now, obviously we know he's a big Palace fan. He's a big football fan as well. Um, but most importantly, he's a film and media student production student at the Brit School. Um, so part of one of his projects that he put together was a documentary on the football culture in Cyprus. And that's not only due to his heritage, because he's from a Cypriot background, but also football is actually really huge in Cyprus. Um, and there are a lot of strong groups of ultras at matches. Now, this documentary will be out soon. Um, but as part of the documentary, he had the opportunity to interview various footballers, including none other than former Palace captain Jason Punchin, um, who obviously was out there playing in Cyprus. He's just recently retired, but is now going to take on more of a coaching role. Um, so, yeah, um, James, thank you so much. He, he, he reached out to us, and also his, his mum, Maria, reached out to us and said, you know what, we want to put this interview out on your channel, which we're truly grateful for. Um, so, so thank you for that. But listen, the, the, we, we're not going to take the credit for this. This is all James... It's hard work with obviously the support of, of Maria as well. So the first half is about his career and his time in Cyprus. The second part of the interview is about his time at Palace. So once again, like guys, if you ever see ever see uh, James around and about, make sure you show him some love. Uh, congratulate him on this achievement as well. Because um, he's put a lot of hard work into obviously his course. And this is obviously one of the products for that. So James, once again, thank you so much for this opportunity to to share this interview on our platform. And all we can say is, up the Palace. Enjoy. Hello, today I'm joined by professional footballer and Crystal Palace legend, Jason Punchin. We're here in sunny Paphos to talk all things secret football. So, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Enjoying a nice weather. Played a bit of golf, so now I'm relaxing. That's good. So, before we get into secret football, I'd just like to tell me, like, what part of your career in England? It's like how that went. Yeah, well, I started off really Barnet kind of way to come from that one more and then it changed to MK Dons. And then Barnet's where I really took off and sort of worked myself on the league to the Premier League which was space of about four or five years. Why did you decide to move to Cyprus when you left Crystal Palace? It was more so of the fact of not being away from the family again because I come off the back of being at Huddersfield for six months and I didn't really enjoy my time there, didn't go too well in football, those things happen. But again, yeah. I was away from family six nights a week. You know, I decided to take that decision and I thought it was a good decision for the family. How would you compare the standard of football in Cyprus compared to across your career in England? I think when you play the big games here, they can be like, say, middle championship games. But I think when you play the lesser teams, it's, it's, the atmosphere is not as good as it is because of the fans they don't have. But when you do play the big games, I would say the atmosphere of the game, not the intensity, is as good as a Premier League. The fans of there, would you? How would you describe the fans up here? The ultras, they're all crazy. Some of them. For, for me, it's, really, it's it, in in one breath, it's the simple people, it's their culture, it's the way they think, the way they are as people. Yeah, they always want to win. It's important to win your own. As an English player. It's the first time in my career where you're actually so close to the fans. First of the fans can have a lot of contact with you, whether that be coming to the training ground and being around the place and you don't really have that contact. So I think it's in one breath it's good, but in another breath sometimes it's bad. Yeah. So obviously Palace had their Homesdale fanatics out here. A lot of clubs have their own. And so what would you say the differences or similarities are between them? I think it's more the fact of that the fans are... The fans can get away with a bit more gear than in than, yeah. than England. Like, let's, let's be honest. And also, I think the fact that the fans can be more connected to the players here is more something different. You know, like, for example, the ultras, they can turn up at your training ground for, for, for good or bad reasons. Yeah. Especially yeah. that cannot happen for good or bad reasons. 
Nope. What is it like when a group of fans do turn up to training out here again? No, it's good luck in these different uh, in Paphos. When you're at Paphos, the fans, they turn up at the good numbers. They turn up to, to push the team at the start of the season, through the season, through big games and stuff. So it's, it's, it's different. It's good. Yeah. So what is it like being an English player abroad? There's obviously the general thing with English players is they start and then their careers in England and never really leave. So what's it like being an English player abroad? I've really enjoyed it. I think that a lot of English players should look forward to trying to do it more because you know, I think I've probably I've come here at a good age but I feel like I could have maybe gone to a different level at a different age you know and I, I've, I've enjoyed it my family's enjoyed it so I can't really say I can only say good things about it so what would you say your highlights of being out here in Cyprus have been during your two teams you played for I think it's more just the, the fact of enjoying the football knowing the people getting to know the culture you know and I would say generally I've had some success on the pitch but nothing that why nothing that a kid expect the level was a lot more harder than you would need life i've really enjoyed it what are your favorite things about living in cyprus i just think it's the, the comfortability of the kids you know the things you can do if your kids daily you're outside of the village you go on bike rides your kids are you're, you're at home a lot more there's not so much traffic there's not so much traveling like london it's not as busy yeah. you know so there's so many pros so obviously you living out here there's a lot of things that you can also get to go and do so what are your favorite pastimes whilst being out here in cyprus oh i love playing golf so there's a good spot being in Paphos. so yeah for me in that sense what do you like about golf because i've seen a lot of footballers seem to like it so what is it that attracts you to the sport of golf so well, i think it's just a sport and you want to get better and golf's one of those games you can never master it. football you can master and hate it yeah. Yeah, the last eight positions in in golf, it will never matter. One day it will come something like this. Obviously, Cyprus has a lot of good food, but what is your favourite food out here? Oh, you have to say Slovakian. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually, no, I'll take that back. I'd probably say it's uh, like Catty Mary though, as a reserve, local mm -hmm. mothers. Flectico um, <laughs> is probably my favourite. I like Flectico. Why? Just how soft it is, it's critical of the, the, the whole situation. You go through, we cook it for five, six, seven hours. Just do that whole process there. Um, there's not just food, there's beaches. Do yeah. you have a favourite beach out here as well? <laughs> well I like going to the Akimas, but also then Pataris is nice. So there, there is, there's, 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 there's Paphos, between Pathos and Pataris, but that is beach. Interesting. Have you managed to pick up much Greek yet, or? Yes, you <laughs> Yeah, there's some little bits here and there. I'd probably say that's the one downfall of being here is that because of all the people in the dressing room, they speak English. Yeah. They're not speaking Greek. So when I went to a North Australia, I was a bit more Greek, which helped me. So. My kids have picked it up because we're down there at school, so that's a, that's a plus. Are there any particular phrases that you know? The common knowledge everyone knows in sports, you learn all the bad words first. So yes, I do know them. <laughs> I'd say to share them, but I don't think I'd be allowed to include it. So I think we'll have to move on from the bad words. And yeah, yeah. What's next for you in football? Or... Oh, for me, I'm just going to sit there and assess it till the summer. So I'll coach yeah. about my eight last thoughts. I'm not 100% sure if I want to continue because I'm just, yeah. if there's not the right project, then I won't, yeah. I'll go down the coaching route. But oh, I mean, at the moment, I'm happy where I am. And you know, football changes from one night to the next, it can change. So I'll just sit and wait and see what happens. Fair enough. So that is the end of the Cyprus section of this bit. Now, to speak to you about Crystal Palace, obviously the club you've captained and supported as a child. And so I've had, I'm obviously a Palace fan, and I've had a lot of messages from fellow Palace fans who knew I was going to meet you, who just wanted to say thank you for all you've done for the club. Is there anything you'd like to say for them? Oh yeah, they was brilliant with me. Loved it. It's a home for me, and you know, there's a lot of history. It is my home, really. I will always class it as home. So I'm thankful for the way that they supported me, and they also helped me in the whole times in the bench. Yeah. You were obviously the captain. So how did it feel discovering that you would you were going to be the captain of Crystal Palace? Oh, it's a special feeling, you know. In the hometown club, you've always got for a lot of family there. But I think probably more importantly, it was just a pivotal time when it was. We was really fighting to stay safe. And, you know, at that time we needed points and we needed results, and we still got some boys in January, and it was a good time to, to really be. And so, what was your highlight as a critical part of there, your standout moments? So, it's difficult because everyone will say the FA Cup, but that you know, takes in the wrong way. It's a great day for everyone to remember, but you'll, you'll remember as a loser. I'd probably have to say the goal against Norwich. So, it was because of where we was at that time, again, doing one FA Cup, but needed the points. Yeah.
So obviously, a lot of people will remember the FA Cup. So at the time, what was the feeling when you scored and then after the match as well? It's just become so real because you, you don't realise it. When you're playing in flat for me, when, when you play in that game, it's almost like a, sometimes you're in a mental block because you can't hear nothing. Yeah. You can't hear your teammate next to you. And it's, all, it's almost like the ball hit the net and it took me a second to realise that actually it's not working. Yeah. But then afterwards, when you look back and then think to yourself, like, it was 10 minutes away from the FA Cup, but you can never take that back. Yeah. Would you say there was any regrets in it or not really? Yeah, I thought we have regrets myself. I should have kicked Rooney. Because he was the experienced player as he was. And I look back at those things and I think I just moved into midfield. I didn't understand, even at that age, I didn't understand those little intelligent fouls and stuff. And when I look back at it, I would have probably now would have kicked him definitely. Yeah. There is one question a lot of people love to ask you for some reason. I think I know why, but did you really go toilet during the game? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> So, as a Palace fan yourself, do you still find yourself watching the games very often or do you more just like to relax now and let it go on to the background? No, I love watching the games because I love seeing the club doing well, the players doing well, and I think they've got a very technical squad. You know, and you want to see them really kick on and I look forward to next season. What did you make of the involvement of Hodgson after Vieira got sacked? Because at the time it was a bit controversial, but it looks like it's been the right move so far. I think you never say something to make sense, but... Roy, at that time, what the club needed is the perfect fit because he knows many of that group so well. He knows the club so well, position they're in. And I think it's, it's been a great one for everyone. It was done. Yeah. What do you miss about being in South London? Oh, I'd probably say I have to miss my jerk chicken or my mollies. <laughs> Which one would you prefer, a jerk chicken or a mollies? It's tired, man. Can't answer, that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> So, going back to the current squad, who are the, some of the players who maybe you didn't get to play with that you wish you got to have played with? Oh, I think when you look at Mark Bay, good player. I go back to that front, I think Eze, Lise, very, very good players, you know, and I think that those players probably really made them. But I start looking forward to getting those better up. How many of your former teammates are you still in contact with from the time you're playing at Palace as well? Yeah, I still speak to the players now and again, but you know, so everyone gets a bit older. Yeah. We're still very fond of each other because we have some, a lot of good times. And you look at someone like James McCarthy and, and Wardy, they're still there and they're still going really good. Yeah. I've been, I've been impressed with Ward this season. Obviously, he's at similar age you were when you left. So is it impressive in that sense to still see him go like? As a starting strong player in the Premier League? Oh, 100 percent I think he's done really well. He's obviously the leader in himself. You know, at times he's the captain and I think yeah, really is a great testament to me. I hope he's uh, for me, I hope he finishes his career at Palace. <laughs> During Palace, we obviously have a lot of these things, kids. But what was your favourite one whilst you were playing, or even before when you before you were playing for the club? Any that stick out? It's probably be the kit that we got to the FA Cup final win that one. I mean, just the block one. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was blue, red, blue. That was, I like that kit a lot. With Palace comes a lot of chance as well. Were there any that stood out to you during your time at the club, even that exists now? Oh, yeah, you listen to the chants and they, they, a lot of them stick with me. Like my kids, like but my youngest daughter, she doesn't really remember too much. My middle daughter and my, my oldest daughter, they will remember chants. Yeah. So sometimes they'll just start singing the chant. Are there any particular ones that get sung a lot? Yeah. They mix between them to be honest. Yeah, they, they they went to so many games, been sent here so many summers. They mix between them. <laughs> a personal one from me as a season ticket holder. I'm in one of the stands, but what was your favourite stand that itself was? Oh, I probably have to say the home zone because I sat there as a kid. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. like, as a kid, I sat there so like, often. and obviously it's, it's probably you interact with them a little bit yeah. more because when you walk off the door, for some reason, it was walking towards that. Yeah. yeah. As a whole, how would you rate your time at Palace? As a loved every minute of it. I think it probably went in stages. Loved every minute of it, and you don't realize what we got to this. Yeah. Hopefully, one day I have to go back there in some capacity. Would that be? A, would you say as a coach or another way? Or just yeah, I think it will, I think the, the route I will go if I if I stop playing will be the coaching route. So hopefully, one day. To the Future manager or just coach? Well, manager. If I say coach, yeah. that's why I'll be a manager. I think I'll be a better manager than the coach. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me for the interview today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.